Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is Environmental Science Video 15. It's on human population impacts. A model we've used so far this year is this idea that the Earth supports society, which is driven by economy. But do all the countries on our planet impact the environment in the same way? So this map right now, if we impose it on a NASA simulation, so this is going to be the amount of carbon dioxide that's produced, you'll see that we're producing way more carbon dioxide in red in the northern hemisphere. In North America, in Western Europe, in Southeast Asia, we have higher amounts of carbon dioxide. We're burning more of those fossil fuels. Not so much in the Southern Hemisphere. You can see the winds moving it around. But watch what happens. We're in May right now. Watch what happens as we move into June. And then as we move into July, the carbon dioxide levels are dropping off. Now we still have industry, it's just that it's summer. The leaves come out, they do photosynthesis, and they take in that carbon dioxide. Watch what, not, what happens now as we move into October and the leaves start to fall, that carbon dioxide comes back again. And so it's not equal impact to the environment. And so we've learned so far that with industrialization, you see exponential growth in a population. And so the, the population increases in that is impacting the environment. But it's not only the number of people people, it's the affluence of those people. It's how much they're consuming and it's also their technology. Now some technology can actually help the environment and so I'm talking about destructive technology. It's impacting the environment. One way to measure that is using the iPad equation. You don't actually have to calculate it but it's combining these three things. The population, the affluence, and the destructive technology. An analogous model is the ecological footprint. It measures how much of the earth do we need to support that industry. Now there's our feedback loops and so all of these are going to put impacts on the population itself. Another big one aside from population is the economy. If the economy grows too much that is going to consume resources and destroy habitat. But if the economy is not big enough in certain countries, it can lead to disease and hunger. And so the iPad equation looks like this. It's pretty easy. On the left side, we have the impact. We then have the population. So in other words, the bigger the population is, the larger the impact. If we're looking at affluence, that's going to be consumption per person. So if you have a house and several TVs and many cars, you're probably going to have more affluence than some who lives in a village in Africa. And then is that consumption actually harming the uh, environment or impacting it? Well, it depends on what technology that is. And so let's give you an example. So let's look at a country. So this is Burundi. It's in uh, the Rift Valley of, of Africa. And so if we look at their population, there are about 9 million people that live there. So there's going to be a certain impact. If we look at how much money they make, the average person makes $910 per year. What does that mean? They don't get much money, so there can't be much consumption. If we were to look at the major industry, it's going to be agriculture. Meat is rare because it's going to be highly expensive. If we look at transportation, um, bicycles are really common. And so is there a huge impact in Burundi on the environment? No, it's going to be relatively low. But if we look at another country, so this is the UAE or the United Arab Emirates, their population is 9 million as well. If we start to look at their consumption, however, the average person there makes 50 times what somebody in Burundi makes. What does that mean? There's a lot more consumption per person. If we look at their technology, this is Dubai, you can see there's way more technology, way more burning of fossil fuels. There's going to be a greater impact on the environment. If we look at Burundi, this is the capital of Burundi, you can see there's not a lot of industry and so that means it's going to have a really small footprint. It doesn't consume much of the Earth's area. If we look at something like UAE, there's way more industry. And so if we were to put values to this, the ecological footprint of Burundi is going to be less than one global hectare per person. It's going to be relatively small. If we look at it, what it is in the UAE, it's going to be about 12 times that. That means it's going to have a larger ecological footprint. It's going to consume more of the Earth's resources. So this graph is kind of interesting. On the bottom, we have the ecological footprint. And on the right side, we have a development index. And so these are going to be the developing countries and these are going to be the developed countries. So the U.S. is going to have high development index, it's highly developed, and it's also going to have a very large ecological footprint. 
And so where do you think the UAE is going to be? It's going to be way out here. So it's going to have a high footprint and it's going to be highly developed, it has more impact on our planet. It's got a larger economy. If we were to say, where's Burundi going to be? It's going to be way down here. It's a developing nation. And so you can see the general trend is as countries develop, they'll move up and then they'll move across. And that means they're going to start to have more of an impact on the planet. Now, this line is interesting. This line right here at 2.1 global hectares per person is the biocapacity. It's what our earth can support. And so you can see that a lot of countries are actually exceeding that. And so going back to our model again, it's the society and the economy. And so as the population gets larger, we're going to have population effects on the environment. But the economy can affect it as well. If the economy is too large, then we have too much of an impact. But if it's too small, that can impact the society itself. To illustrate how the population and the economy can impact the environment and therefore the population, we're going to use worldmapper.org. It's a great website. And so let me show you what you can do. So this is a map of the world with all the countries. What you can do is you can change the size to represent another characteristic. So this is what the Earth would look like if the countries represented the actual population. So you can see that someplace like Canada shrinks. Uh, but China and India and Pakistan are going to get much larger and that's because they have a really high population. If we were to look at poverty, watch what happens. Well, America shrinks to almost nothing. Same with Western Europe. But we can see high poverty in India, some poverty in China, and we have high poverty in Africa. And so this is going to impact the people. And so if we look at hunger, for example, we're going to have high undernourishment in Africa and we're going to have high undernourishment in India. It has that double hit of a high population and high poverty. We could also look at health. And so this is health public spending. And you can see it's going to be much greater in America and in Japan and in Western Europe. Well, how does that impact disease, for example? This is going to be the HIV prevalence. You can see it's going to be low in areas like Japan, but incredibly high where we're not spending much money on, on public health. So incredibly high in certain areas of Africa. It's two and sometimes three out of ten adults are going to have HIV. If we look at income, we see that inverse relationship where we're going to see the developed nations having a higher income, especially like Western Europe and, and the United States. How does that impact ecological footprint? It's going to be almost a direct relationship there. The greater the economy is, it's putting more impacts on the earth. We could look at resource use. This is going to be greenhouse gases. It's going to follow that economy as well. We could also look at things like habitat destruction. The whole world is connected, so changes like uh, increases in greenhouse gases can cause high extinction rates. And those are going to be in areas where we have a lot of species. So this is Ecuador right here in South America. And so we have so many species at risk because there's lots of species there. And so did you learn the following? How the population and affluence and destructive technology can affect the environment. These impacts could be measured through the iPad equation or the ecological footprint. Remember, if the economy is too big, we can have resource use and habitat destruction. But if the economy is too small, you get disease, hunger, and I hope that was helpful.